In this video, we'll be looking at the six key management functions of facilities management. Welcome everyone, I'm Chris from the Xenon Group. Today, we'll be looking at some of the key management functions of FM. But first, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single video. So, facilities management involves a considerable amount of, well, management. Clues in the name, right? But what exactly do FMs have to manage? As is often the case, the answer to this question can vary from one organisation to the next. Some FMs will have different responsibilities to others. However, we've identified six common areas that most FMs in organisations will be responsible for to some degree. Let's take a look at the first of these. People management. It's highly likely that at some point in your career you'll be responsible for managing people. Whether you're a head of FM with a team of managers, coordinators and assistants, or a single FM with just one in-house receptionist, you'll be responsible for keeping your staff happy, motivated and productive. You'll need to plan their workloads, ensuring that you get the most out of them without burning them out. You may need to consider the makeup of your team. No, not that type of makeup. Rather, I'm talking about the way your team is structured in order to make the most of the individual strengths and weaknesses of your people. You'll need to conduct appraisals, deal with disciplinary issues or grievances, and keep a sharp eye out for signs of stress or provide the necessary support to deal with it. Number two then, it's health and safety management. In many organizations, it's the facilities manager who takes overall responsibility for health and safety both in general terms across the premises and in relation to specific projects. Even where there's a dedicated health and safety officer, the FM will usually work very closely with them and will need to have a good understanding of health and safety legislation, procedures and best practices. Now, health and safety is often derided as being boring and bureaucratic, but it's a grave mistake to think of it this way. Poor health and safety management can lead to fines, imprisonment, bad publicity, loss of customers and loss of staff. Not to mention that providing safe space for staff, customers and visitors is just the right thing to do. Now, nearly everything you'll need to do to achieve your goals in FM will cost money. Sadly, there's only a finite supply and that's why management function number three is budget management. In order to run an effective FM department, you'll need to be competent when it comes to running a budget. This aspect of FM can be encountered at all levels. Those more experienced FMs may be in charge of setting the budget. Others will manage the budget and try to make sure spending falls in line with the parameters that have been set. While those at earlier stages in their career may simply be responsible for processing purchase orders and invoices. Wherever you sit, the chances are you'll be involved with finances in some way. Now, budgeting can be difficult and time consuming. But don't worry, you'll rarely be on your own. You'll likely have a finance department in your organisation who you can work closely with to keep the budget on track. So on to number four, project management. Now you're unlikely to go through a career in FM without managing a project. Projects can generally be defined as one-off occurrences, not just part of the day-to-day -day job. They can be small and simple or large and complex with a range of issues and stakeholders to consider. Either way, they'll need careful planning and management in order to be completed successfully, on time and within budget. Number five then is contract management. Even if you keep most of your services in-house, you'll likely have to use contractors at some point, either for project work or specialist services. If you outsource some or all of your services, then contract management becomes a significant part of your job. And for those of you who work for outsourcing companies yourself, you may still need to subcontract work on occasion. Managing contracts effectively is critically important as you need to be sure that you're receiving the service you're paying for and at the agreed standard. You'll need to negotiate the terms, you'll need to monitor the performance, and you'll need to deal with any quality issues if they arise. Last, but by no means least, is customer relationship management. Your customers are the people that use or benefit from the services that you provide. Without customers, 
the FM department wouldn't even exist. So you need to be sensitive to their needs and responsive to any issues they may have. Customers will often want a platinum service for rock bottom prices, so you'll need to manage their expectations effectively. And naturally, the key to good customer relationship management is communication. Remember that communication works both ways. You need to listen to what your customers are telling you, but you also need to keep them informed of what you are doing and how it's going to affect them. So, what can we take away from all of this? When asked about what's involved in facilities management, many people will start talking about the services that FM provides. Cleaning, catering, maintenance, security, and so on and so forth. But you may have noticed we haven't actually mentioned any of these services once during this entire video. That's because, regardless of the services you manage, hard, soft, or specialist, the principles of effective FM remain the same. And the common thread running through all of them is people. Whether it's the people you manage, the people in other departments that you liaise with, the contractors you use, or the customers you serve, your ability to work effectively with those people will define your success as a facilities manager. People often think of FM as a technical discipline. It is not. Sure, some technical knowledge can be helpful, but someone with no technical knowledge and great people skills will almost always outperform a highly technical individual with no people skills. To be a truly great facilities manager, you need to develop the skills that will help you work effectively with people. Emotional intelligence, communication skills, empathy, and so on. These are what will truly help you make the jump from good to great. Okay, that's everything for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found the video useful. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. That way you won't miss any of our future videos. If you'd like to know more about facilities management qualifications and training or recruitment or consultancy, head on over to www.zenongroup.co.uk. It should be flashing on the screen right now. Other than that, thanks once again for watching. I'll see you next time.